Hey guys, a hot fix for Borderlands 3 just rolled out and they've made some pretty big changes. They've patched some pretty big exploits. They've added a new event and they've made some great changes to several weapons and I'll show you guys all of that. There is an anniversary celebration that's currently going on where they're doing different types of events. They've had an Echo Cast Overload event that's been running since July 30th that does end today. That was giving players a better chance of scoring loot during rare chest events in the Echo Cast Twitch extension. There's a new event that starts today. It's called Bonus Boss Loot. It's going to run from today through August 13th, and most bosses have an increased chance to drop legendary loot. In addition to adding this event, they've also made some updates to the game. They have discounted the listed item of the day in the Veteran Rewards Machine. In a previous update, they made it where you could buy mission-only items from this vending machine using Iridium. Another great change they've made is to Flax Skill Tree. They've updated the Beastmaster's Interplanetary Stalker skills so that weapon damage is affected by big game while using the Cosmic Stalker class mod. I've got that all on screen here so you can see that the skill tree that's affected is the blue one, the interplanetary stalker in the big game, and then the class mod has flax hunt skill power is increased by 25%. Another change they made is they added tags to punk enemies to mark them as humanoid. And shout out to Killer6, Thick Filet, and Lazy Data. I was talking to them about this and they said that this change could be because of one of Flax skills that was having issues called Hunter's Eye, where it was being kind of picky with the bandits. Another thing they addressed is reported concerns where Gunner would lose bonuses from Sleeping Giant after entering Iron Bear. The next couple of updates are some pretty big exploits that they have now fixed. Just a few days ago, I had made a video showing you guys that if you reset the Mayhem Mode modifiers, you could duplicate these chests with the Iridium on it, and it would also duplicate the Iridium, and you could get an insane amount of Iridium off of these chests. Well, in the hotfix today, they addressed a reported concern that switching Mayhem levels levels could cause some areas to spawn more iridium than intended. So if you have the hotfix on, then this will no longer work. Another pretty big exploit that they fixed were the infinite jabber spawns in the King Bobo arena. The update reads that they disabled the ability for enemy adds to spawn infinitely during the King Bobo fight. Once you kill King Bobo, he doesn't respawn for a while, but these jabbers jumping out of these huts are non-stop. Well, this is no longer working if you have the hotfix applied. The next thing I'm going to show you guys are some changes that they made to some of the weapons. They buffed a bunch of them. They said, we've seen significant improvements to performance after the adjustments made to projectile weapons in the previous patch. Today brings a set of changes to various pieces of gear that were negatively impacted by those necessary changes without sacrificing the stability of the game. We have also included a few buffs to other pieces of gear that we felt needed attention as well. They went in and buffed 17 legendary items and I'll show you guys all of them. I'm going to show you the before and after. The first one is the Jacobs AR lead sprinkler. They have increased the weapon damage on this. I've got the before on the left and then after the hotfix on the right and it went from 53.59 to 71.45 on the damage and that is a 133% increase. Also down in the bonus stats they took off the negative 26% weapon damage so they removed that but it still has the other stats. The next one they changed is the Brainstormer. They've increased the chance for projectiles to chain. None of the stats on the weapon itself had changed. They just increased the chaining ability and they also changed this for the reflux as well. The next one is the Hyperfocus. They increased the weapon damage. The one I had went from 3260 to 4075, which is a 125% increase. Also, the bonus stat weapon damage went from plus 47% to plus 80%. They also increased the weapon damage on the carrier. Mine went from 1399 to 2098, which is a 150% increase. Also for me, mine got an added bonus stat down at the bottom. It didn't originally have any kind of percentage plus for weapon damage, but now it has a plus 38%. So it looks like Gearbox is being very generous with these buffs. Next is the Wagon Wheel, also an increase in weapon damage. Mine went from 8794 to 11433, which is 130% increase. And this one also got an additional bonus stat of plus 57% weapon damage. Next is the Ruins Call. They increased the accuracy on this one. Mine went from 63% to 73%. For the Lucian's Call, they reduced the spread of projectiles and also increased the weapon damage by 155%. In addition to that, the bonus stats for my weapon have 
had increase on weapon damage. It went from plus 26% to plus 94%. The King's Call got a nice increase of 185% increased weapon damage, and in addition to that, you're going to be getting a bonus stat, and mine is plus 52% weapon damage. I will definitely be trying this one out with the Flak Critical Build to see how much better it really is. The Queen's Call also got 185% increased weapon damage, and for mine on the left, they took off the negative 29% weapon damage and then gave me an additional plus 32% weapon damage down in the bonus stats. Next is the Tig's Boom. It got a 125% increased weapon damage, and down in the bonus stats, nothing changed. I had a plus 38% weapon damage, and that remained the same after the hotfix. Next, they did a nice buff to the Complex Root. This thing is already pretty OP, so it's nice to see that they're improving it even more, but what they did was they decreased the weapon charge time. None of the other stats changed after the hotfix, and I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the charge time before and charge time after the hotfix. On the left is before the hotfix, and on the right is after, and you can see that there's maybe like half a second difference in the time that it charges up and fires. It doesn't look that significant here, but it really honestly felt pretty fast whenever I was in-game firing it. The next weapon they buffed is the Moonfire. This got a 125% increase in rate of fire. Mine went from 1.68 seconds to 2.10 seconds. This weapon here did not receive any additional bonus stats down at the bottom. Everything remained the same. Next is the Mongol. It got a 110% increased weapon damage. And for me, none of the bonus stats changed on this one. Everything was the same after the hotfix. The Cutsman got an increased weapon damage of 116%, and for me, none of the bonus stats changed. There was no additional weapon damage in there. The next one is the Bearcat, and they said that they lowered the ammo cost from 4 to 3, but whenever I went to look, mine had actually gone from 4 to now 2, which is even better. And on top of that, and they didn't mention this in the patch notes, they increased the damage quite a bit on this one. The weapon damage and its elemental damage both went up by 237%. So that's a nice little surprise. I'm definitely gonna have to get in there and check this gun out. All the other stats remain the same, and there's no additional weapon bonus damage down at the bottom. Next is the Unseen Threat. They've increased the damage of homing bullets with critical hits. And lastly is the Fastball Grenade. They increased this grenade damage by 180%. It went from 43,000 to like over 77,000. And I don't use this one a whole lot, but it might be worth going in and checking out and seeing how much more powerful it really is. I have never seen these kind of numbers on any grenade. I think this one makes it the most powerful if you were just judging it on damage, but probably not the most powerful based on performance. But that is all we have for the patch notes. And let me know if you guys enjoy me making these kinds videos. I personally love breaking things down like this and seeing the fine details and the numbers. So if you guys want me to continue to cover the hotfixes, updates, and patch notes, let me know. I will enjoy doing it if you guys want to see it. And in my seven years on YouTube, I have never in my life asked for anyone to ever like my video. I feel like people are going to like it if they want to. I don't like to force people to do it. But in this situation, I will request that you guys like the video. Only if you want me to continue to make these kinds of videos. That's that's the way I can really know if that's what you guys want to see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helped you out and we'll see you next video.